seat to the Senate coup and the month-long stalemate that followed. Neil Breslin was presiding over the Senate when the initial motion was made on the floor. He's also one of the more outspoken lawmakers. During that time, he was known for blasting several of his fellow Democrats for their turncoat behavior. Senator Breslin, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here, Liz. It's probably not the fondest of memories that you have. You know, it, it really doesn't bother me. It's a year ago. It's, it's over with. We're moving on and making significant policy changes. Do you recall that moment when it actually happened? Sure. I looked down and saw two people who the day before had been Democrats who were now Republicans. And I saw yesterday when we were in the majority, and now because of their switch, we were in the minority. And what was that like for you? I mean, you were right up there on the dais. Right. Uh, it was the first to consider how you get out of the predicament of you're now in the minority and to get off stage. Right. And we adjourned. <laughs> exit stage uh, ex left. Exit stage left. And, uh, uh, I just uh, was surprised that anyone who you felt was part of a team could ever do that. Well, actually, if I remember correctly, you guys killed the lights. I don't know how the light. That wasn't me. <laughs> I, I, God. I, I exited stage <laughs> left. Right. There was at the time, and, and I covered that coup fairly intensely. I remember being at the Capitol every single day for a month, as were you, because the governor issued some um, decrees. He could bring you there, but he couldn't force you to get anything right. done. So we were there every day, including Fourth of July. Yes, you mm -hmm. were. Yes, yes, you were. Yes. Um, did you, uh, you were actually at the time quite up upset. There were a number of people who were quite upset. You've been a member of this body for a while, involved in po politics for a while. Some people argued we shouldn't take these two guys back. We should right. actually go back to the minority because the demographics of New York are such, or the enrollment is such, that we're going to get to the majority anyway. Right. I think that was a consideration, and that was part of the discussion. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, some of the leaders decided that it was best to deal with them, and they dealt with them. And they were accepted back, uh, not to be greeted with open arms by all of us, uh, I guess including me, uh, that I, I, I felt as though that there's some degree of respect that you must have for your fellow senators. And I was never able to have that either before the coup, during the coup, or after the coup. So one of these, these senators who actually bolted to the other side and came back first, Senator, former Senator, now Hiram Montserrat, was expelled by his colleagues, an unprecedented action um, because of a uh, fel uh, misdemeanor assault charge that he right. was guilty of, of, found guilty of assaulting his girlfriend. So he's gone. One of them is still there. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Pedro Espada Jr. is still there. How does one go about working with him? Uh, it's, it's difficult. We're in the same conference room. We really don't have a relationship. Uh, I, I studiously uh, avoid him. Uh, and I would guess that he probably studiously avoids me because he, I'm sure he's well aware of my feelings. So you try to go about business uh, and not step on each other's toes and hopefully uh, uh, things will flesh themselves out during the elections, and, and we'll have uh, new people and uh, uh, new work to be done with a greater majority. Now, you have a primary challenger, yes. and you also have a Republican challenger, at least one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Are you worried that this is going to, yourself and your colleagues, hurt you going forward in the elections? Not, re not really, Liz. I'm going to work just as hard. Uh, I focus on the record I have, not on the record that uh, the body has itself, and, and I will rest on a record that's passed more legislation than any Democrat over my years, any Democrat the last few years, and, and the policy uh, the changes we've made in the insurance area. Yeah, that actually, there was a bill in the insurance area that was passed yesterday that you led the charge on. Do you want to just... Sure, as quickly, uh, HMOs, your health insurance companies, uh, they were able to, in the past, the last 10 years, file a rate automatically. Now we have a bill which says you must justify the rate, and it's as simple as that. And we also make sure that a high percentage of every dollar they spend is on health care. It's not on advertising. It's not on sporting events. It's on health care itself. And is there a same-as bill, a, a companion bill in the Assembly? That passed late last night, and uh, we look forward. To, we had a uh, cancer treatment bill passed today. and. We're looking forward tomorrow. Uh, it's the first major step for autism in the state of New York. A bill that I'm sponsoring will pass hopefully in the Senate tomorrow. Do you actually, does the governor have, uh, has he indicated to you that he'd be signing the HMO bill? Yes. Oh, he has. Okay. Absolutely. And uh, there's actually some movement on the budget too. So there are things that are looking up at the Capitol. 
It's, it's very difficult, but it is looking up. And, and anybody who's facing a $9.2 billion deficit, knowing that you're going to hurt vulnerable people, we have to take our time. And it's happening in other states. It's happening nationally. We are without money. No one predicted the, uh, the crisis that we would be in at this time. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time, and thanks very much, Neil Breslin, for coming in. And we'll be checking in with you again, I'm sure, on the budget and all this other sort of flurry of legislation that's moving through in the final days of the session. Thank you, Liz. Thanks.